Sometimes life just feels off and you wonder, where did my spark go? Trust me, I've been there. We get caught up in the day to day and lose touch with who we are and what we love. But the good news is you can always rediscover yourself. In this video, I'm sharing the steps that help me reconnect, set meaningful goals, and step outside of my comfort zone. If you're ready to reignite your passions and simplify your life, stick around because we're in this together. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sierra, and here on my channel, we are all about creating a life you love. So with that being said, we're gonna hop into today's video. So today we're talking all things rediscovery, rediscovering yourself, remembering who the heck you are, finding that spark, filling up your cup, like really start to think about those things. I know we've probably all been in a space and a time to where we're just like, what am I doing with my life? Like, where am I supposed to be? I know I'm not in the right spot, but what should I be doing? Like, it's a feeling of almost feeling stuck, not knowing what direction to go. So today I have a few tips that are gonna help you guys when it comes to this rediscovery train, because I feel like throughout life, you're gonna always have to like tap back in and rediscover yourself because you're going to be different in every season. I mean, think about it. If you become a mom, that's totally different. If you become a wife, that's totally different. Heck, even when you go off to college and become a student, that is totally different. But you always have to be able to check in with yourself and figure out, you know, am I happy? Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Am I fulfilling any kind of purpose or passion work? Like really start to think about those things. So let's go ahead and hop into the tips that I have for you guys today. Okay, the first things first is you have to reconnect with things that you love. Sometimes people have to go back to childhood to even find this because I kind of feel like once you become an adult, life just gets real serious real quick. And sometimes you just gotta tap back into childhood and like rediscover those activities and figure out what you like. What brought you joy as a child? Typically for me, I was extremely like artsy. I used to doodle on everything, like everything. Um, even when I think back to like grade school, every class that I remember is actually only my art classes. Everything else is a blur, but I remember my art classes because I enjoyed them. I loved going to art. Like I feel like I used to really connect with my art teachers as well. They used to love to help me. So I just love to be able to express myself through my art. So. And I'm so grateful that my mom actually sent me to an art and design high school. So I had art for four years and it was just like a breath of fresh air. I mean, honestly, being a teenager sucks. High school kind of sucks. Everybody's just like, you know, high school, high school, whatever. But it just allowed me to have some sort of creative outlet at school. And I honestly think this is why people probably struggle when they get into the real world, or this is why I struggle when I got into the real world. And when I say real world, I mean corporate America. Um, I mean, I went to an art high school, but I didn't go to an art college. Like I got a regular job working in HR after college and I thought it would be like cool, but I, I, it got real boring real quick. And even what I do now, I'm a social media manager and an employer brand lead. So, I mean, like that in itself seems like a cool, like kind of job, but in reality, I only can get as creative as they want me to. And then my job is like super conservative. So it's like, I can't really be creative. I found myself a few months ago saying like, oh my gosh, I think I need to quit my job. But then I sat back and remembered, like I get to this place all the time when I'm like working, I'm like, I just can't do it anymore. It's because I'm not fueling a passion like while I'm working. When you think about it, you're at work eight hours. You're spending majority of your time at work. Things that you spend most of your time doing, try to align those with your passion. And I know that's not always possible. And if you cannot do that, like make sure you're doing something on the side. You have some sort of like hobby to where you can actually fulfill that passion, fulfill that joy and like really feel that happiness within yourself. So like I just said, at work, I have like zero creative freedom. So I actually do a lot of branding work on the side. I have a business called Sierra on Social where I help people get their brand identity together. I do websites, I do logos, I do brand collateral, like I can do it all. But honestly, it's not something that I would just always push because it's like, 
I just felt like it easy to me. I'm just like, it's not a big deal. Like it's just a website, it's just a logo, but it is a big deal. It brings me joy. And it was just like, I never pushed it. Cause I'm like, okay, I have a job. Like, but now I'm at a place to where like, I have to fuel this passion of mine because if not, I'm just gonna be miserable. And nobody should feel like that. Like you're here on this earth for such a short time. So you need to make life as joyful as you can. Surround yourself with new people and new information. This can be easy if you're an extrovert. I'm gonna just put that out there. But if you're not an extrovert, this is kind of be hard to like build new connections. I feel like as an adult, it's like super weird because when you're in school, like college or even high school, elementary school, it's like you guys are in the same class doing the same thing all the time on the same mission. But as adults, we're all doing something different. We all have personal lives. We all do other stuff on the side also. So it can just seem like a daunting task to do it. It can be kind of awkward. I don't know about y'all, but like I have this social anxiety a bit here. You gotta learn how to step out your comfort zone with it though. And honestly, I think I made the biggest step as far as like jumping out of your comfort zone. I moved across the country solo. Um, I left my family, I left my friends, I left my relationship. Like I just moved here by myself, not any connections here at all really. So it was like, I don't know what possessed me to do it, but I just had the urge to do it and I did it. And now I'm here two years and I just feel so much more happy in my life in comparison to how I felt two years ago back in Michigan. So. I think it's important that sometimes we do need to switch it up a bit, switch our circles up a bit. And as a person who is socially awkward, honestly, something that really worked for me is I was working with a therapist uh, when I first got down here because I was just like, it was a lot. It was a transition. And I was telling her, like, I really want to make a connection with this person at work. Um, we didn't really sit by each other. Um, we weren't on the same team or anything. So I just kind of thought it was awkward to just go make conversation. And she told me, she was like, she's human, just like you. So one day I kind of saw her, she was packing up her stuff to leave. And I just packed up my stuff and I left with her. And she was walking and talking on the phone. And I'm like, um, are you fun? And then she hung up the phone call and I just was like, I just want to introduce myself. Like I just moved here from Texas and I'm just trying to like, you know, build up my network, like just trying to get advice. Like she's been working at the company for a long time. So I kind of just now always go to her, like if I need like some solid like advice. And it just started with a simple conversation of introducing myself. And with you guys, I was so like freaking out about this conversation all day. Like I was planning the conversation in my head all day. And then the moment she got up, I'm like, all right, it's go time. And I just did it and it wasn't that bad because she was like super nice. So just go for it get out your comfort zone and as far as like outside of like circles always be taking in new information i'm a big tony gaskins fan and he is big on taking in new information he's big on women working on their three b's their brain brand and body i think i i think i got my three b's in check now so it's brain brand and body so brain would be always taking in new information if, if it's not something that you do in your everyday life, it is okay to step out of your comfort zone and learn something new. If you have an idea like, oh, I wanna look into that. Watch a video, watch a YouTube, get you a little uh, audio book. Like if you're not a book person or pick up a book, like it's never a bad time to learn something new. So, I mean, just do it. And honestly, it can be beneficial for you. It can open new doors for you. It can give you the opportunity to make money always be taking in new information. Like you don't wanna stay in the same place, in the same circle, doing the same thing every weekend. Like at what point do you just say like enough is enough? And like, I'm not trying to shit on anybody right now, but like, I feel like I had got to a point where like, I'm like, I need something different. Like if you want something different and you don't see it around you, you gotta go find it somewhere else. And this kind of makes me think about the quote when they say like, if you're the smartest person in the group, you're in the wrong group. You should always be networking and finding people who are smarter than you because they are going to teach you something that you can make useful for your life. And then honestly, you become a master of it 
and then you can teach somebody else. And that, at that point, you are fueling some sort of passion. You're fueling some, some type of purpose because you are giving back. So I want you guys to really think about opportunities to where you can take in new knowledge. I feel like with um, the social media world, it's so easy to be distracted. Just being in the world in general is so easy to be distracted. But like what I don't want to do is get to the end of my life and I'm just like regretful, like, oh, I didn't go after this. I didn't try this. I didn't learn about this. And it's just like, it's either like you have to stop being lazy. You have to get out your comfort zone and you just have to go for it. You have to be comfortable being alone. Um, Personally, for me, I don't necessarily think I have a hard time being alone. I think I had some sort of fear of being alone. But honestly, I made the ultimate big choice. I moved from Detroit to Dallas alone by myself. And I had that opportunity to learn to enjoy that solitude time with myself. And I've always been like a loner. So I've, I know how to enjoy my own company. But like when you're back at home, even when you're at a point where you're like, I need to be around some people, it's so much easier to be around people. But like here, I didn't always have that opportunity. Like I eventually, you know, made friends and connections here to where we can go out to eat or go to the movies and stuff like that. But like when I first got here, I had to really just sit down and just learn to like enjoy myself. Um, some things that I like to do, I like to just cook up a nice meal, like make it pretty on a plate, watch a nice movie, make a margarita, make a sleepy girl mocktail and just really enjoy the ambiance of my life. Honestly, my life just looks completely different the moment I moved here. I made more money here. My apartment was beautiful here. So it was just like, I enjoyed the space in its entirety. Side of stuff like that, like going on a date with yourself. You can do things like journal. Um, I'm not a huge fan of journaling because I'm just not. I like to do things like scripting. So writing out what I want my life to look like. Um, you can do meditating. I personally like to meditate. I meditate when I go to the gym and I sit in the sauna. Um, it just gives you time to really sit and be with yourself and work on your mental space. Um, and then sometimes you just gotta do some solo outings. <laughs> I mean, me being here by myself, if I wanna go get something to eat, I had to go by myself. If I wanna see a new movie, I had to go by myself. If I wanted to try a new workout class, I had to go by myself. And the thing is, it's not as weird as people make it seem. Like if you want to go try a new restaurant, you can A, go sit at the bar if you're an extrovert or if you wanna challenge yourself to meet new people, sit at a bar, you can talk to people. I'm not doing that. But like, <laughs> if you don't wanna do that, you can actually get a table. Take your headphones, watch a movie or watch a video or read a, like bring a book or take a notebook. You can write out some plans like have time to sit with yourself there, but like you can make it a fun experience. It doesn't have to be awkward and weird, like, but that is the opportunity for you to really like learn how to enjoy yourself, enjoy time with yourself. And spending time with yourself really just allows you to self-reflect. It allows you to find that inner peace, like seriously. And for me personally, before I moved here, um, me and my, he was my boyfriend at the time, we lived together and I, I would say I was a bit clingy. And it was so weird because it was like, I have always been a loner. I have always enjoyed my own company. Like I've always been okay with just chilling by myself. But like being in a relationship, I kind of just felt like attached. So me moving away, doing long distance for a whole year has really helped develop me in that area. I'm not like that anymore. I'm like, go out and do whatever you want to do. Just make sure you're home by a certain time and you update me if something is going on. But like, that is an opportunity. Like I literally grew because your girl was a little bit crazy. I'm not even going to hold you up. But and it wasn't like a, um, a feeling of like, oh, I don't know what he's doing. It was just like weird. It was like a weird, like, I felt like separated or kind of just like not important, which is weird, but that's why it's important to spend time with yourself so you can learn to love yourself, rediscover yourself, figure out who you are, what you like, what you love, but that takes time with being in solitude with yourself. And so the last thing is going to be, take a close look at your environment. And when I say your environment, I mean your mental space and your physical space. 
It's much easier to clean up your physical space and make sure, make sure your place is like clean and tidy, you know where everything is. I mentioned this in a video in the past, I've read a book called The Mountain Is You. And when we have our space like cluttered and crazy, it is just us self-sabotaging because when your environment is hectic, it's usually a representation of what your brain is. And sometimes when the environment is so chaotic, it allows you to be paralyzed and just focus on something else. You're not gonna sit down and write out the business plan that you need to write out. Like you're not gonna sit out and read the book that you need to read because the house is chaotic. You might just sit in the bed and scroll TikTok or something, YouTube or something. So have your space clear, clutter, everything in its, in its home. It'll give you the opportunity and space to get things done that you're supposed to be getting done in the time without like being distracted by all the chaos. Um, then to declutter your mind mentally, some people like to journal, like I was saying before, just take all your thoughts and put them on paper. You might have to really work on like limiting beliefs in this time. Um, some people may go to therapy. Um, some people may get a life coach so they can just kind of get a plan in order of how to get their brain like working in a productive way. Some people might have to get on antidepressants and me, that is the one. I honestly feel like it was such a good thing for me to do that. And I actually have a video on it. Um, I'll link it over here. But my brain used to be so loud, guys, like so loud. And day one, I took it, it silenced. And it wasn't like somebody was talking to me or anything, but it was just like all these, like it was just too many thoughts at once. Like you need to do this, you need to do that, but what about this? You're scared to do this, blah, blah, blah. It was just like, it was just chaotic. Like, I know y'all seen that like Mr. Krabs meme where he's just like, ah, that's how I felt every day, most of the time. So like once I started taking like the antidepressant, it really helped calm my mind. Another thing it helped me with was the social anxiety. Like. Sometimes when you have that social anxiety, it's because you're thinking too many things at once and like you're overthinking, you're over just doing it. And when it comes to like interactions with people, I do so much better with like real conversations. I feel like I hate those surface level conversations because they can be so awkward. But the thing is, we have to think about it. It's not that big of a deal. They probably don't even care. They probably don't even think it's awkward. It's all in your brain. So you have to get your brain together so you can just know, like, just, this is your life. You make your life as great as you can and you just have so much control and power that I don't even think that people realize. It takes, it takes a strong individual to do something different. Like if you see something different and you want more for and you want more for yourself, you have to take yourself out the environment and create something new for yourself. Believe that you can do this for yourself. Like the thing is you can do anything that you want if you actually believe it. That's the thing, people don't believe it. People stay in their limited mindset and they're like, yeah, I ain't gonna do that. Like it's just a, it's just a wish, it's just a dream. But like what I don't wanna do is get to the end of my life and just have like all these regrets of like things that I wish I would've tried. Like just moving to Dallas alone like away from everybody was just like, that was game time for me. I learned to take risks. And it's like, when it comes to taking the risk, like, yeah, you might fail or yeah, you might mess up, but guess what? It's just a learning experience. And like, you just learn from it and keep going. It's not that big of a deal, guys. But um, this is everything on rediscovering yourself, just getting your spark back, just figuring out who you are. You're a different person in different seasons of your life, but you always need to check back in with yourself. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Share this video with a friend. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Drop any tips and tricks that you have in the comments below. Worry your tie, your child for now, child, child. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she making that shake, breaking that bait till the bait break.